now for a global look at forced labor and justices. Joining me is Kevin Dixon, the Executive Director at International Justice Mission. Kevin, let's start here. What is forced labor slavery? Forced labor slavery is uh, a larger issue than many people realize. There are just over 40 million people in the world who are in some form of slavery. About 29 million of them are in some form of labor slavery. Um, and uh, labor slavery can be forced or bonded. So forced labor slavery is really what it sounds like. Uh, a child who's been abducted and forced to work in, for example, the fishing industry on Lake Volta in Ghana, working out on the boats, diving down uh, to untangle nets from tree branches and at serious risk and with no option for freedom. And bonded labor is a condition where people are tricked, coerced into form, some form of slavery, perhaps to pay off a debt and, uh, and consequently are uh, working in a brick kiln or a rice mill or a woodcutting facility uh, with no liberty. I mean, the, the, what you're, the scenes you're describing are just horrible uh, to hear about. Why is this going, so, going on for so long and so unchecked? <laughs> Modern slavery and uh, human trafficking are a massive global business. It's estimated that it's a $150 billion a year business. So this is very profitable. And in some parts of the world, uh, there are laws against slavery. In fact, slavery is against the law in almost every country in the world. And the problem is not the absence of, is, the, the problem is not uh, law, the problem is law enforcement. Wow. So there, there needs to be the spotlight needs to be taken off the law, but to those who are actually implementing it. That's right. Wonderful. And what does that turnaround look like? Because now we're looking at now the solution there. So that, that, that's an important point you brought Robert, up there. So what IJM does is we partner with the local authorities in order to help ensure that the laws that are on the books are enforced. Um, and so what we will do is we will support, train, and accompany the local authorities to address specific uh, cases of uh, bonded and forced labor slavery. Wow, so can you tell me a story? Take us into the life of someone IJM has helped to kind of turn around and bring towards really a brighter future. So I'll, I'll tell you about a woman named Tayama. Uh, she lives in the state of Tamil Nadu in the southern part of India. Um, some time ago, her child, her daughter, was ill and she needed to borrow some money for um, medicine. Uh, and she was told that she could borrow money from a man who would then allow her to work it off. So she and her husband began working in a woodcutting facility. Um, her child was there with them, and it wasn't long before she realized that she was being held there against her will. She was never going to be able to pay off the debt, and she and her husband and child would never be free. Um, while she was in this woodcutting facility, she became pregnant and was afraid that uh, her newborn child would be born a slave and that there would be no freedom ever. So she managed to get a hold of International Justice Mission. Our investigators came in um, and then accompanying the local authorities, uh, the, the slave owner who was nicknamed the Beast was arrested. Um, Tayama, her husband and daughter were allowed to go free along with others who worked in this facility. Uh, the child was born in freedom. And Tayama remarked later that she, she wondered if she would ever actually meet this child, let alone meet this child in freedom, but she did. Wow, that's, that's remarkable. I mean, right now there is a Canadian law being crafted uh, to kind of address some of the issues you and I are discussing right now. Can you unpack that for us a little? So uh, Bill C-423 was intro introduced into the House of Commons in December, um, and this Modern Slavery Act uh, resembles uh, an act that has already been passed in the UK, Australia, the Netherlands, France, and in the state of California. Um, and what it does is it gives teeth to the Canadian government to be able to uh, address and uh, punish Canadian importers who are importing products that have slavery in their supply chain. Mm. So, um, for example, uh, there's a high rate of slavery in the production of seafood. It's estimated that 71% of Burmese workers in the seafood industry are slaves. Um, and so Canadians may not think as they purchase mm -hmm. a shrimp ring that in fact that shrimp has been uh, harvested and peeled by slaves. Um, and so the Canadian government is taking steps to ensure that importers are held responsible for uh, any uh, slave taint 
in their supply chain. So let me ask you this, Kevin. I mean, I, I, I'm thinking about the everyday Canadian watching this, hearing the great work IJM is doing, uh, and you pointed out something. You said the average Canadian, the grocery store, purchases something and doesn't know the backstory. How do we bridge, bridge that gap between you know, Kevin, I had no idea what I was purchasing, you know, at a grocery store had such a backstory. How do we bridge that gap for the average Canadian who is really just trying to think, I need to pay this mortgage, I gotta get my pick up my kids from school? How do we make it a much more everyday reality for the average Canadian? Well, a recent Ipsos Read poll shows that 91% of Canadians have expressed concern about the possibility that there is child labor or slavery in the products that they purchase. So Canadians are concerned about it. Um, what is important now is for the importers to be held accountable for the products that they import. Um, and that's where Canada, with its history of emphasis on human rights, uh, stands in a very good position to hold those importers accountable for their actions. Does the future look bright for you? All that's ahead, hold the importers to task. Does the future look bright for you on this? I think it does look bright. We we have a vision as an organization to see slavery wiped from the face of the earth. We know that through our efforts, 150 million people have been protected from slavery. 50,000 people have been rescued. Um, and we're partnering more and more with local authorities in the places that we work, and we're seeing a greater political will to address this, and I believe that it will be overcome. Awesome, keep the great work you're doing. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you. Appreciate it so much. Yeah.